Good morning. It's Monday, April 8th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Holding Tightly This Promise. And our scripture is Hebrews chapter 10. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. As we move towards what I consider the most blessed time of the year, Holy Week, the Passion of Christ, his triumphal entry, Good Friday, and culminating in Easter's resurrection glory, we focus during this season of Lenten preparation on the blood of Christ, his sacrificial offering for the cleansing of our sins. In Exodus chapter 40, we read the elaborate instructions God gave to Moses for setting up the tabernacle in the wilderness. This detailed process was not to be varied because each movement and each article placed in the tent of meeting spoke a piece of God's forgiveness and his relationship with his special people. In the ancient temple mode, a consecrated priest would enter the most holy place and offer the sacrifice for sin once a year, every year. In writing this letter to the Hebrews, the author picks up this imagery and reminds us of the hope to which all disciples of Jesus Christ hold. Once Jesus finished his work on the cross, it was he, the lamb sacrificed from the beginning of the world, who would bring the sacrifice into the perfect holy place, heaven's throne. There, the forgiveness for sin was made complete forever. The writer, having outlined God's marvelous plan of redemption, the purging of sin and cleansing of our souls, then proceeds to tell us what to do with it. Namely, we are to embrace it tightly. Corey Ten Boom's tragic life is chronicled in The Hiding Place. Her family heroically protected Jewish people during World War II's Hitler regime, only to wind up in concentration camps themselves. This family held to their Christian faith seriously, laying everything on the line for the cause of protecting innocent lives. In an interview I watched in the 1970s, Corey talked about material things as opposed to God's spiritual promises. I will never forget what she said. She said, I learned to hold material things loosely in my hands. If you hold them too tightly, it hurts when God pries them out of your fingers. These words are a wonderful reminder that the blood of Christ was not shed so that we could possess money or power or prestige. Those are but passing wildflowers. They bloom today and they're faded memories tomorrow. That is also the case with sorrows and poverty and shame. The world's cruelty passes as quickly as its pleasures. Holding tightly to something is reserved for that which is precious, vital for life and eternity. There are many things in life to hold loosely, but there are also a few things to which we should refuse to let go, even with our life hanging in the balance. Truth and fidelity are among these. And the chief reason is the promise of God, his love and care displayed in sacrifice and resurrection. The writer of Hebrews told us to keep meeting together in worship, focusing on this gift of Christ and encouraging one another with its meaning and provoking one another to good works in Christ's name. For you today, to what or whom have you been holding tightly? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.